tutorial 20, part 7. We're going to now do an FTP server. So we know that we've got SSH and ping and total lockdown and the loopback all running and working and that's fine and we've just been testing that. And if you've been following this series uh, within tutorial 20, this segment, then uh, you know how we got to where we are at the moment. What we now want to do is we just want to have a look at FTPing to um, IPT minus SRV. Ah, so the first thing you're going to hit is we've done a minimal install of CentOS. So we want to quickly yum install FTP. Super, so now we have an FTP client, we can do an FTP. And it hangs, of course it hangs. Because we're only allowing um, SSH and pings at the moment. So this was another good reason for having wide open available. Because I'm going to open this machine up temporarily. There we go. What happens now when we try to FTP? Connection refused. Why is connection refused? Well, connection is refused because we don't have any um, VFSTP or any FST, F, FTP server running on this machine. And if it's not an FTP server, it won't serve FTP content. Um, I also wanted to point out the um, the status that we're in, I mean, obviously I can do a yum install now. That's another reason for having the um, the actual wide open script available. When we want to open things up, because we know we're going to get hampered by the firewall, want to open it up for a couple of seconds, do what we need to do and come back in, we could do the yum now. But I just want to show you what happens when you try and run yum with our firewall. So we've gone back to allow SSH and ping only. Um, now we want to do a yum install of um, VFPSFTPD. That's our FTP server. Go and get the package. Oh, 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 oh. yeah. Can't resolve it. Oh dear. Yuck. So we're getting DNS errors because, of course, we haven't allowed DNS yet. And we just get the overall no chance. So that's absolutely fine. That's what we'd expect to see. Let's go wide open again. Do our yum. Yep. And there we go. So it's now resolving. It's doing what we want it to do in a team. Um, I'm just going to go back to SSH. So now we know we've turned off yum access, DNS access, etc. So that's another good reason for having wide open and total lockdown available and all of these different scripts available to quickly manage your IP tables and allow you to do what you need to do. So now we've got a VFSTP, VFS, v, v, yeah. And now we have um, VSFTPD package down on this machine. We can install our FTP server. Let's just call it FTP server from now on. Um, and that way we can gain access to this machine. Let's see what we're getting at the moment, just as a matter of interest. Um, well, in fact, there'd be no point in that because we haven't even started the uh, V S F T P service yet. So we're going to now configure the FTP service. Part seven. Tutorial 20, continuing on on part 7. Um, I'm just about to configure the VSFTPD service, um, but before I do that, I wanted to cover as well, because this comes up quite often, um, we have allowed SSH, so we have allowed port 22. And what that does mean is if you, uh, even on this machine, if we yum remove uh, FTP just temporarily, so we'll take FTP away, FTP, IPT, SRV, nothing. We've just been through this a second ago. But I, what I did want to cover was we're in as root and I can SF, uh, sorry, I can SSH to IPT SRV and I can put my root password in and it's nice and secure. Permission denied. And it is denied because by default, SSH the configuration of SSH denies root access. So we saw this when we were doing um, tutorial 19 in Chef. We've got to enable root to be able to log in remotely over SSH, and we haven't done that. 
uh, and that's absolutely fine, so it's nice and secure. But what I did want to show you is what you can do by root is use SFTP or SSH FTP um, to IPT SRV, whack in our password, and that's permission denied as well. So it's nice and secure. That's what we wanted. We don't want to be able to get in as root uh, remotely over um, SFTP or SSH. And that's absolutely fine. That's what we want. Um, what we can do, though, is SFTP Echillion at IPT SRV. Put in our password. And we're in. And there's my home directory on IPT SRV. So you're probably thinking, well, why are you doing FTP, Eamon? Because FTP is there. But this isn't FTP. This is part of SSH. And it's there by default as part of the SSH package. And that was one I wanted to point out very, very quickly. This, you know, this doesn't stand for secure FTP. It's SSH FTP. And that is available. So if you want to transfer large files uh, inbound onto your um, software server and you've allowed where we've got to already SSH from a particular IP address inbound then you've by default enabled SSH FTP. Uh, what we're doing is doing FTP which is a totally different service. Um, and that was all I wanted to point out, so I'll, I'll yum reinstall this uh, FTP client so that we can actually use FTP. And again, it still isn't available. Uh, whoops, FTP, kill you, at uh, IPT, SRV, because there's no service there to receive it. So that's absolutely fine. That's, that's all I wanted to point out in this very short little part here. As this video is about FT, uh, sorry, FTP in IP tables, I just wanted to emphasize I'm not going to do a major large scale FTP implementation here. This is going to be quick and dirty. We've installed the package, it's there. We want to quickly get our FTP server up and running um, so that we can actually log into it remotely and do some stuff on our actual server. So um, we want to basically just dive over into, um, sorry, just organizing my other virtual machines so that we can drag them in. Um, we got the package on, so we want to cd to etc vsftpd. Um, we want to do an ls. Um, we want a vi the vsftpd.conf file. And all you need to do in here, because at the moment, Anonymous users can log in and we don't want any of that going on. We want local enabled to be yes And we want to search for Chirrut And in here it will say Chirrut to local users directory and we certainly want to enable that And then we want to go service, whoops, service um, VSFTPD Restart. It may not be running at all. That's fine. And now it's restarted. So that's absolutely fine. We're in. Um, and that's pretty much it for uh, the actual configuration for a very, very simple one. Uh, what we now want to do is go back here and we want to go, uh, we want to open up a new terminal because we don't want to be root for this. We want to be FTPing to IPT SRV. E Killian, that's absolutely fine. Oops, and it cannot change the directory. But Eamon, I hear you shout. I thought we just enabled the Chirrut to local home user directory. We did indeed. Um, but this is where more of the Linux security stuff dives in. And what we haven't done is if I do a get, um, I'm trying to remember the command now, se bool um, minus a, um, yeah. 
that's what we want and then grep FTP in there you will see that the FTP home dir is off and this is SE Linux getting in the way so what we actually want to do is we want to set SE bool um, set SE bool minus P I think it is um, FTP underscore home underscore dir to on lowercase up again no, to on give that a second and then we'll do the get again so that's changing the security config to allow the cheroot to actually take place give it a second Wow, it's like the longest command in the world. Um, let's have a look now. Yeah, that's what we wanted. We want on. Let's go back here. Do an FTP in. Do an LS. There we are. So we're wide open and we have FTP. Excellent. That's what we wanted to achieve. Now, let's go back to our um, CD cd scripts so we have an ftp server and we know it's working in wide open mode so now we want to get things working in lockdown mode so if i go um what have we got in here uh, allow ssh ping so we're going to copy allow ssh ping to allow ftp minus ssh minus ping to keep our little um trail going and I want to do an allow FTP so if I do that now, now obviously we haven't done any rules yet for IP tables to allow FTP so that's fine I just wanted to show that if we now go back in again and FTP over nada we're locked down again and that's fine so in wide open mode it's working fine in lockdown, it's working the way we expect because we haven't enabled a rule set yet. So let's write the rules. What do you do first? Well, whoops. Um, we're going to vi this file. And we're going to go to the bottom. It's getting quite big now. And we're going to insert, and this will be on the public interface as well. So I'm going to copy. I'll tell you what, I'll just copy this. Yeah, no, I'll copy the whole thing. I'm going to copy all of that. And we're going to remove these two rules that are in here. And we're going to say this is step seven. And step seven is going to be public FTP access for an allowed host. Because that's what we want to enable one host to be able to get into this machine um, so how do we do that well um, let's pretty much do what we did before so we're going to have an IP tables appended input rule so inbound communication input into um, the actual Ethernet address so that's going to be on F0 our port ETH0 the protocol is TCP and the port this time isn't 22 it's 20 and the source is dollar allowed and minus J accept now here's the thing with uh, FTP it's got two ports so we need to do IP tables minus a input again minus i eth0 minus p tcp the destination port is 21 and the source is dollar allowed and we're going to accept the input okay so now we've done that we want our outbound rules so Let's add our outbound rules. IP tables minus A, output, the output chain, uh, minus P, 
TCP minus minus S port. So the source port is 20. The destination is our dollar allowed and minus J accept. And then finally, in fact, I'll do it the lazy way. I'll do it this way. We want to do the same for port 21. Perfect. Okay. Let's do that and see what we get from our machine. Uh, client 1, that's the one that's gone to sleep on me. So we tried connecting in a minute ago. As we saw, nothing happening. Now we're getting a response. Excellent. E killing. Perfect. We're in. Oh, we're not in. Hmm. That's interesting. Now you see, I expected this. I expected this because this I wanted to show you. This is some of the problem with FTP. It jumps around ports. What do I mean by that? Well, it enters this passive mode, and the best way I can describe it is it negotiates a random port above 1024 to send this LS on in passive mode. Um, and that means it hangs. So we can do control C and just exit out of here. So whilst we are getting connected, absolutely we are. It's working exactly the way we expected from our firewall rules. We need some extra stuff to get FTP working. So what we need to add is some way of telling this that when you jump connection to follow it as um, an established or a related connection, so it's state, we're going to tell it that the state established and related to FTP allow it, allow it to happen. There's a couple of things we need to do to make that happen. And the first one is we're going to need to restart IP tables because we need to modify IP tables to have connection tracking or contract enabled. So we'll do that in the final segment of getting FTP running. How do we get contract enabled? Well, we need to VI the ETC sysconfig um, IP tables minus config file. And in here, we need to add the module. And that module needs to be um, IP underscore contract underscore FTP. And we pop that in there. Now, usually you'd restart IP tables, but our file does that anyway. So now let's VI our allow FTP. Go down. This is where we're service restarting anyway. So for us, we now want to add our little element in here. So what do we need to add? We need to add, and uh, it took some finding, I have to say, to get this working precisely the way I wanted it to. But we go IP tables minus A. So we're appending an input rule. And that input rule is a match on con, whoops, with two ends, a match on contract. And it's CT state is established and related. So it's contract state. Uh, it's contract state. It's contract state is established and related. So if somebody's established already because they've come in fully authorized, logged on, or it's related to FTP, we're going to minus j accept now we don't need to put a minus s on this because they'll only have gotten in to be established or related because they've been allowed 
And then we want to follow that up with IP tables minus A, and we need our output rule. And the protocol is TCP, and the source port is 1024 colon. And you're going to go, well, what's the colon? Well, we could put in 65, you know, and finish this off. Or we could just say it's any port. This basically says any port higher than 1024. And the minus minus D port is also 1024 range right the way up to 65,500 and whatever. And then the state, so match the state as well. And the state is established or related. Don't put a space in there or it won't work. And minus J, accept. Right. And those two rules should enable us to get around what we just saw. So now let's run that. And we have an error on D port unknown option. VI that. IP tables output. Have I spelled something wrong? Oh, look, I put D port and a colon. <laughs> okay, that's what we want. I knew I'd spelled something wrong. There we go. Excellent. So there it is, and it's loaded the additional modules here. See? Contract is in. So now, when we go back to our um, our client one, and I'll just bring it in, we can now FTP, E. Killian, LS, and there it is. That's what we wanted. So we can now list, we can go into passive mode, and it's all working. So we're able to FTP into our FTP server from client one on the public IP address. If I now exit that and I go FTP on the private, we get nothing, which is exactly what we expected. And if I bring up our green machine, our client two, we should have no luck with getting in at all. Um, we, of course, are going to have to go yum install FTP to get the client. Yep, go ahead and install it. And we go FTP, IPT, SRV, nothing. So we have enabled FTP for one host and one host only, and it allows for passive mode to do our listing of files. So that completes FTP. I see here we have two step sevens. So let me just uh, adjust this file. Uh, and we need a space above the other number seven. So this should be step eight. And we should have an echo after this one. And let's run that file again. Excellent. So step one, two, pings. So total lockdown, loopback, pinging, SSH, SSH private, public FTP, all enabled. So we're very, very happy. Everything's up to date. So what remains is public yum, because we just looked at, if I go yum update, we had to set up the wide open. And that's what we get because YUM isn't working. And YUM isn't working because of two things, DNS and um, YUM itself, uh, which relies on port 80. So neither, you know, that's not working at all, as we can see here. Um, we're getting all the splurge and the errors. So that's what the next step is on the public interface. 
Join me in a minute.